got it yeah okay what happened girish okay so you are able to hear me yes yes you are able to see me yeah yeah you are able to see the presentation yes yeah. very good okay so this is an ambitious target i have said because normally it takes a lot of classes so if push comes to shove we'll stop with linear regression this logistic regression is something which many of you would not have been exposed to logistic regression is basically the gateway to machine learning because it looks at a classification problem and classification problem is something which normal science in science and engineering we we don't use so it is basically the ideas come from computer science because they do zero and one yes or no so we have to see how to bring the classification problem to our field so only if you start studying the classification problem and then use this logistic regression it is a very very power it is a passport it is a passport to proficiency in machine learning so if you are not able to do this today anyway next week i am not taking the class uh, the subsequent please mute yourself whoever is making so much noise only i am officially authorized to make noise <laughs> all right so the week after next so we will go through this logistic regression once you have got a hang of the logistic regression more or less you have learned machine learning after that i will after that if you learn neural network then it's done okay bayesian and all that is extra so please note that in order to understand logistic regression you have to understand first regression in order in order to understand regression we have to go through statistics and wait what and what about the first four classes because you have to look at data what all you can do the preliminary is associated with the data data cleaning this thing all that and then what are the various types of analytics so the first few classes went uh, were basically foundations of data science okay so actually i am combining two courses normally what people teach us two courses is foundations of data science will be a course foundations and then uh, introduction to machine learning will be a course and normally they'll do it in about 60 70 hours 30 hours each if you see they're trying to do this in 15 hours because basically all of you are research scholars so uh, and also it is very focused towards atmospheric science so you really don't know uh, the effort which goes into this so but as far as we are concerned if only one student is attending or 100 students is, are attending the effort is the same we don't i don't uh, reduce my effort based on how many students will attend because it is a catharsis for me okay so and uh, there is a joy for me to learn something new and then this will and as i told you you can see that many of you will be finishing phd if you see after 5 years sure sure enough one book will come from me on this subject all right okay let's go to this statistical concepts linear regression and logistic regression all right now a brief note on statistical concept this is where we started last week all right so a random variable so this random variable we see the x factor is something so this could this is what we are studying so this could be discrete or this could be continuous so toss of a coin so it can be only heads or tails okay so it is only discrete then if you roll the dice 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 you rule it here whatever now continuous basically it is only heads or tails it anyway zero so drive on temperature rh all this it can take any values who told you that it can should take only discrete values all right so there are two types of variables a random phenomena is something in which the individual individual outcomes are random although when you repeat it a regular pattern of outcomes emerge so this is where we started discrete random variable we already described this continuous random variable also i have just told you now the, pro the probability distribution is what we are looking at the assignment of probabilities uh, to the values of a random variable is known as a probability distribution so we just say that sigma f of x f uh, sigma n equal to 1 to n f of x n is equal to 1 and when x x is discrete so you say that uh, the probability of getting the head is 0.5 and the probability of getting the tail is uh, 0.5 so sigma probability is equal to 1 if this is an unbiased coin of course on the head uh, if you you seen the shole movie and all this that's a biased coin okay if somebody puts a weight at the bottom of the heads and this things like always lines on heads that will be a biased coin so the sigma of the probability is going to be 1 uh, so i explain this for a discrete variable likewise you have to do the integral if it is a continuous variable the expected value is basically the mean 
So we know that if there are 100 students in a class, if you take the mean, what is the expected value of the student is basically in the absence of any other better metric, you will just, you can also do the median, but basically mean is something with expectation. In that case, the weightage for each of the individuals is one, but sometimes the weightage is not one. For example, you're grading, they are grading your course and you write two tests, which are having only 20%, 20% weightage and the end semester examination is 60% weightage. So if you get 20 on 20, 20 on 20 in the first two quizzes and do only, you get 60% of the marks, then this will be completely opposite to somebody who gets 60% of the marks in the two quizzes, but, he's, but he aces the end, 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 end semester examination and scores 90%. So this is some elementary statistics. You're able to figure out what I'm saying. So the expectation is basically uh, minus infinity to plus infinity. Let's do for a continuous variable, the E of X. Minus infinity plus infinity of x dx. Okay, this is the expectation x sub of b. So this is equal to the, so the first moment. Also called the first moment. All right. So the expected value x is nothing, but the weighted mean of uh, all the the weighted mean of all possible values of x multiplied by the respective weights. Usually the expected value is simply referred in common parlance, in common man's terminology, terminology, it is the mean, the mean of the random variable. Okay. If this f of x equal to, if the f of x equal to one by n, then the E x is the arithmetic mean of x. Okay. If f of x is one by n, the discrete, uh, f of x one by n, then E of x is basically arithmetic mean in the case, in the case of a discrete, uh, in the case of a, when x is, x is discrete, just go back, go up. So if f of xn is one, then it, uh, if one by n that can be taken out, then basically, okay, what I'm saying is e of x. Now when this f of x equal to one by n, so this just becomes one by n, sigma n equal to one by n xn. So this is nothing but x bar, right? This is nothing but x bar. This is the mean. Okay. Please note that. So what I'm teaching so far is very obvious to you, but what is quite subtle, what is nuanced, what is nuanced there is, a, is that in daily life when you're calculating the mean that the density, the probability function, you're, the f of x you're using is actually one by n. Without your knowledge, we are, you are just doing it. But if the, if, the f, if the f of x is not one by n, if it is, if it is going to be a function of x, which is often the case in probability, in, in probability, in the distributions which you use, then you have to use this formula if it is a discrete variable, and this formula if it is a continuous variable. Okay, the expected value of a function. So we are getting even better. The expected value of a function is basically let f of x be the probability distribution associated with the function. The expected value of the function now is denoted by e of g of x. So basically, it is now. Now you are saying it is e of g of x. Huh? Okay, so it is e of g of x. So basically, you have to be careful. So you just put some other bracket here. Huh? So say, let me make it clear e of g of x. So the expectation of a g of x, the expectation of a g of x, okay, is given by this. So is given by g n of x into f. This thing, if it is a Continuous and for the discrete, I will come down. Okay. Okay. The variance is basically the expectation of x minus mu. The variance is basically it's very clear. So if you have a distribution, if you have a distribution like this, and this is your uh, code. Okay. One, two, three, blah, blah, to n, and uh, uh, this is your y or something. You have got it like this. So this is your y bar. So y bar minus y i. Uh, sigma i equal to one to n. Okay, so this is basically, and then you have to divide it by. Right? Okay, so this is basically the. So uh, the difference between a particular value of x and the mean value, and the expectation of that. What is the expectation of the square of the difference of a particular value or the variable with respect to the mean? Okay. Alternatively, this can also be written as e of x square minus mu square. Okay. So for those for those who are mathematically inclined, 
Let us prove it. So variance. So it is uh, after this Greek. Uh, General denoted the Greek letter sigma square, sigma denoting standard deviation, sigma square variance is basically sigma square equal to minus infinity to plus infinity, x minus mu whole square f of x dx. Okay. Now sigma square equal to plus infinity x square. Uh, this pen, all right. So, I didn't do any magic so far. They expanded a minus. Uh... So, what is x squared? So, this is x squared. x squared of f of x dx is basically e to the power of uh, expectation of x squared, right? Okay. And uh, what can I say? Mu is a constant. Mu can be taken out. Mu into x of minus infinity f of x dx. Uh, plus mu square into what is this minus infinity to minus infinity plus infinity f of x dx? What is that value? We just saw it. What is that value? That's the total probability. What is that? One. One. Exactly. There you are. There you go. So, what is this? This f of x. Uh, what is x? x f of x dx integral? Mean. Ah, exactly. So, minus 2 mu square plus mu square cancel plus mu square plus sigma square is e to the power of x square minus mu square. There you are. That's what is written in the slide. All right. So, that's good. So, it is like jogging and running and it's just doing like exercise, right? Workout. And if you do something and it, it comes out nicely, then you get a kick, right? That's the that's the addictive power of mathematics. All right. So you, this was absolutely not necessary, but just some fun with maths. Okay. All right. Now the covariance of two covariance is important. The covariance of two random variables x and y is a measure of the linear dependence between them. Okay. So the covariance of x y is e to the power of x minus mu x into y minus mu y. So for example, so you understand. So if there are two variables. You have to study the covariance. Okay. Why do you, why should you have to study the covariance? Because suppose you're doing data science, whatever, whether you're doing glaciology or aerosol, water chemistry, what, what have you said, climate change. If there are so many variables, there should be some frugality uh, or economy in your processing. Therefore, you have to really establish that whatever variables you're studying, x1 to xn, how many of these are truly independent variables? So if you look at the cross correlations so or the covariance is a kind of a cross correlation. So if they are truly independent values, if they are truly independent values, then the covariance should be zero. If there is a covariance, there is a chance for you to write one variable in terms of the other. Therefore, you can reduce the number of independent variables in the problem. Is it okay? So if there are two unrelated quantities, okay, let us say X is Fraction of rainy days in a year. Y is fraction of T uh, twenty matches one by India in that year. So what do you think the covariance of x, y should be ideally? 
What should be the covariance of xy in this case? Huh? Can somebody answer? Hello? Ideally, it should be zero. Zero, correct. Otherwise, wait. Who is that ideal? Otherwise, you are saying that if it rains, India will win, is it? Are then you are doing Jyotish. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Who is that? Pradeep. <laughs> I have an even better example, but since it's being recorded, I wanted to stop short. I stop short of saying that. For example, okay, this is a fun example. Right? Don't. So let us say that uh, the percentage of. Oh. Okay, so covariance is the independent. Oh. All right. Now, this is the great call, Gas. I'll do namaste to him. I uh, Last year, I got a book during Corona. I just got a book. Please read his biography. The smartest guys in town, eh? so you know, the Gauss contribution is amazing. Okay, all right. So, the normal distribution is also called the Gaussian distribution, it is also called the bell shaped curve. So, Gauss lived from 1777 1855. <clears throat> German professor Gauss proposed this in 1909 at the age of 32. Okay, please note that the 32 seems to be 32, uh, 32 years. What Ramanujam lived 32 years, Adi Shankara. Okay, so. Basically, if you can't do it by 32, I mean, I've, I'm already plus 21 beyond the 32. But anyway, be that as it may, let's come back to this. Let's come back to this uh, normal distribution. It is also known as the Gaussian distribution after, after this call Gauss and his, and his famous uh, cap. All right. The normal distribution f of x is with a mean mu and the variance is given by. So this is our, uh, so this is the starting point of all, starting point of all probability statistics. A hell of a lot of data science, a hell of a lot of machine learning. Of course, there are non-Gaussian distribution also. The very fact that you are not saying a non-bell or non-binomial, when you say that it is a Gaussian or a not Gaussian, so you just see how much importance we attach to Gaussian. Okay. All right. So, f of x, huh? Okay, so this is basically your probability function. So sigma square is a variance and mu is a mean. So two parameters. So this distribution has two parameters. X is your variable concern. So it is bell shaped. It is symmetric. It is symmetric. And uh, so this is x and this is f of x. When, when I go to a PhD interviews or why I, I ask them, draw the Gaussian distribution. They draw the Gaussian distribution. What are the apses on ordinate, sir? So they will think that I'm asking an unfair question. You, you've done it all through your life, but often you cannot figure out that what you draw on the X also you can figure out. What you can, what you're drawing on the ordinate is actually the F of X, all right? Okay, so you can see that within mu plus or minus three sigma, how much is that? So within this three sigma, about 99.7%. 99.7% of all the points or whatever, everything is contained, the area is contained within this three mu plus of in this view, okay? Mu plus of mu minus three sigma is mu plus three sigma. Okay, so the GE company also says six sigma, what is it? Six sigma black belt, I mean, the quality control, six sigma is basically, they're talking about a tight quality control of 99.7% of the time you are meeting the quality standards or what have you. All right, so this is the Gaussian distribution. It's the probability density which is given uh, on that. So the peak of the curve, basically the peak of the curve assumes uh, uh, some mu, right? Some mu and some sigma is assumed. Otherwise, I don't know how you draw that. Okay, 
the area of the function from minus infinity to x, the area of the function from minus infinity to x represents the probability uh, that x assumes a value between minus infinity and x. Okay. So the probability, the Gaussian probability of the capital random variable x to lie between x1 and x2 is given by this. I don't want to write it in the board to, you know, in the interest of time. So it is a Gaussian from uh, minus infinity to x2 minus the Gaussian from uh, minus infinity to x1. Okay. So the probability. Once you have this, then you can have normally stable. You can play with the table and then you can write all, you can solve a lot of problems. You can attend so many exams, whatever. So you can play with that. Okay. Ah, this is the standard normal distribution table. Uh, sorry for the, it is an eye test for many of you, I think. I don't know if you're, you're younger, so you'll be able to read. So you can see that Z is the normalized coordinate. Okay. Z is the normalized coordinate where, uh, Z, Z already takes take care of the mu and this thing. So, okay, so Z is a normalized coordinate. Okay, what happened? My Suraj did this slide and he forgot. I hope you can figure out what that Z is. All right. So, this is the standard normal distribution table. So, you can see that when Z, uh, when Z is 3, okay. So, Z is X minus mu by sigma. All right. So, when Z is 3, you can see go to Z equal to 3, you're already 0.4984. 4987 are you able to locate where I am. Huh? Can you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I am on the right side of the table. When z equal to 3.4987 at 3.9, the end of it is end of the story. So it is called so this uh, distribution, the problem with this distribution is it it focuses heavily on the mean. So it's it's a called a weak tail distribution. Huh? Weak tail. Ah, okay. So there are some heavy tail distribution. For example, if you're working in the, if you're in the business of uh, getting uh, extreme value rainfall and all that, you have to use some other distribution like the Weibull distribution and all that. If you're trying to capture extreme value rainfall, you can do whatever machine learning, data science, this thing, predictive analytics, blah, 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 Bayesian. You'll not get the answer because the Gaussian is very unfair to the outliers. The Gaussian always, uh, the prima donna, or the most, the what is supreme in the Gaussian distribution is the mean. There is a mean, uh, if there is an exam which is conducted large number of students, large number of students will be around the mean. That is a basic assumption we are making. This may not be the case if there are students with, if there are uh, different groups of state students with different learning abilities. Sometimes you can have a bimodal distribution. You understand what I'm saying? So this Gaussian has that uh, bias. The Gaussian is uh, considers the mu to be like God, okay? So that is a problem. So those distribution, so this follows from what is called the central limit theorem. I don't want to get into deeper and deeper into statistics. So at probability, so it, the basis for this is what is called the central limit theorem, where we can say that uh, after the number of samples becomes a certain this thing, even though the original distribution is not a Gaussian, if you take a sample of, if you take some a few quantities of the samples, each one of them will be individual goes in all that. Then they start from the central limit theorem and proceed. Those people who are interested take some advanced courses in probability and statistics. The uh, uh, maths profs, the statistics profs will teach you better. Probability pro profs can teach you better. All right. So this is the distribution. Now we are going to solve the problem. Please take down this problem. The average annual precipitation for a city is 1000 millimeter. The average annual precipitation for a city is 1000 millimeter. And... Uh, the standard deviation is 150 millimeter. Now I am saying that, let's say this is Bangalore, 1000 millimeter is already Bangalore with the standard deviation of 150 millimeter. Therefore, in all the years, I can assume that three sigma 450, okay? So 550 to, so we can say that, uh,
So rain, all my examples are rain because I'm obsessed with rain, okay? So X is 1000 millimeter. Sorry, what am I writing? Ah. So 99% of the time, you find out that, suppose this average annual precipitation is based on climatological data of Bangalore, let's say, for the last 100 years, then if you look at that statistic, 99%, 99.7% of the time, the rain will lie between 550 to 1,450, and the mean is 1,000. This is what we are seeing. Now, I will help you, I will, uh, I will help you solve the first two or three parts of the problem, and then... Since this notes is available, you can do it as a practice problem. All right. So now, what is the probability that the rainfall in a particular year is greater than 1,300 millimeter? Okay. Let's solve that problem. Okay. This is the uh, this is the normal distribution. So we are saying that rainfall is greater than rain greater than 1,300 millimeter. Okay. Z equal to x minus mu by sigma. 1,300 minus 1,000 divided by 150. So x is 2. Okay, sorry, z. z is the normalized value. So z is 2. Up to this, it's fine. Is everybody with me? Yes, sir. Very good. Now, let us go to the table. Yeah, please tell me for Z is equal to 2, what is the P? Point four seven seven two. Ah, P of Z is equal to 2 is point four seven seven two. So, what does it mean? So, this is 1000 millimeter. So, we are taking a point which is 1300 millimeter. This point four seven seven two is only this half. Please add the 0.5 to that. Okay, this is 0 0.477. Now, if you go with the definition from minus infinity to 1300, what is the probability that P will be less than 1300 millimeter is how much? P less than 1003 millimeter is how much? Can somebody tell me? Huh? 0.9772, uh, sir. Ah, uh, 9772. So, what is the probability that P is greater than 1300 millimeter? 1 minus the side. Exactly. There you are. So, 1 minus, uh, whatever that is, some 2%, huh? some 2.3%. So, or 0 0.00, whatever. So, you got a hang of the whole thing. Very nice. Okay. Now, uh, less than 800 millimeter is 800 millimeter is elementary. Let's skip that. The tricky part is. The tricky part is part three. Either less than this or greater than this one. Okay. So now we are having a situation like this. Great. Okay, rain. Mu is equal to. Now, either less than 750. So I'm looking at either less than 750 or greater than 1200. So, either less than 750 or greater than. 1200 means this P of X1 and this P of X2 both have to be both have to be to get the final answer both have to be what should you do to both Up, add it exactly so total probability is
there you are so you got it you got a hang of the whole thing let's now quickly go to this okay p of x less than 750 is z That is about 1.67. Okay. Uh, this is 750. For 1200, it is 200 by 150. This is 1.33. Okay. So, P of Z less than minus 1.67 plus P of Z greater than 1.33. So when P of Z is less than this thing, minus 1.67. So what you have to do is, uh, that is 0 0.0475. And the other one greater than is 0 0.918. Okay. So are you able to understand that? Because we want something which is less than 750. Okay. And we want something which is greater than 1200. So the two probabilities are added. That is 0.1393. Is the answer correct? Can you check one of these values? Can somebody confirm? For 1.67, let's go up. For 1.67, so you have to come down 1.6 and then the 1.67 is there. Okay. One, 0 0.4525 is it? Ah. What is that? Ah, 0 0.4525. So you have to subtract 0 0.5 from 0 0.4525. Okay, because we want something less than 750, right? So then again from 0 0.5, you subtract 0 0.4082, which is basically for uh, 1.33 also we can check. 1.33, I'm able to get that 0 0.4082. I'm I'm putting my cursor there. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Ah, very good. Okay. So, all right. So now, now there is a last, there is one last tricky part. What is a, pre find the precipitation that have, oh, that English problem is there. Okay, forget the English problem. Okay. This is called the, find the precipitation that have. I think there is a problem. For, forget about the English now. So find the precipitation. Okay, I don't want to. Uh, let's go to the question straight away. What is the what, what is the probability of a five five percent? What is a five uh, five percent chance of what is that rainfall? What is that rainfall which has, which has a five percent chance of being exceeded? Let's answer that question. Okay. Uh, so therefore, p rainfall must be greater than 0.05. I'm here. The cursor is here. P rainfall is greater than 0 0.05. Therefore, the P of Z, now I am, see, please note that, uh, so basically you are getting trained in Gaussian dist in distribution. This is what you are doing is probability. Please note that we are not using data set. If you're using a data set, it is data set, it is statistics. If you're doing this kind of things, it's, it's still you're working on probability. So you have to combine probability and statistics in estimation and machine learning and all that. All right. So how do you put it statistics onto the Gaussian? That's where the regression comes. So the regression is a marriage of probability and statistics. All right. So now uh, P of Z is 0.45. So yes, so this, this has been drawn on the right side. So what is that Z? Therefore, X minus 1000, which is the mean divided by Sigma is 150, 1.767. Therefore, X is 1250.5 millimeter. Therefore, in a particular year, if it has to exceed 1,200 millimeters of rainfall in Bangalore, that is only a 5% chance, okay? Similarly, if in Bangalore, you want to have a 1% chance of not being exceeded, therefore it has to be tighter than this. So uh, common sense tells you, okay? Common sense tells you that you got a 5% chance answer, which is 1,250. Now you got to have a 1% chance, therefore that rain has to be even higher, okay? Now P of rainfall must be, less than 0 0.01, therefore P of Z is 0.49. What is that Z? 2.33. Therefore, 1,350, 1,349.5 uh, millimeters, there is a one in 100 chance. There is a one in 20 chance for 1,250 millimeters, but there is a one in 100 for 1,349. You can find out what is a one in 1,000 chance, okay? So 
in 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 design they will say i will design i will design such offshore structure for one in 100 year storm but if you want to design for a one in a 200 year storm it has it will be more expensive but the 200 year storm may or may not come but if it comes you are finished the 2004 tsunami you remember so what is the risk you will take you will have to do a risk and risk uh, analysis and this thing so it is a tough decision to take okay all right now let's go to mechanical engineering okay just for fun so the diameter of a metal shaft you know the shaft which is you are seeing the rotating shaft everywhere the diameter of a metal shaft used in a disc drive unit is normally distributed with 0.2508 inch so british units and the sigma is 0.005 inch okay so the specification of the shaft is established to be 0.25 plus 0.0015 okay now the question is very simple this is basically this example the shaft example is basically coming from statistical quality control okay so this is called sqc okay sometimes you also do 100% control if it is very expensive if it is a mercedes benz car you can't do statistical quality control you will do it but if it is a alto or something is coming out or a scooter i don't know normal so probably you'll sample all right so the mu is 0.2508 sigma is 0.005 therefore and x1 please note that x1 the variable is 2500 minus 0015 and x2 is 2500 plus 0015 so the funda is very clear what is the probability that uh, all the shafts conform to this what is the probability that you have uh, 0.2485 What is that? Less than equal to less than equal to huh? close interval point two five one. Okay, what is this? What is the engineering funda of this? Suppose you say, what is this? Sir, it is just blind mathematics or whatever. See, the shaft is made in one part of the factory. The shaft is used inside the car, let us say, or some other equipment. the shaft has to go into something when it has to go into something it will not go into something unless it is 0.2500 plus plus or minus 0.0015 but the production when they are making the production it is normally distributed because of so many things the workers accuracy or the machine accuracy whatever or lubrication whatever or the tool is getting worn off so when you are making it is following a when you are making you are following it is following a gaussian distribution of 0.2508 and a sigma of blah blah but when you are when you are fixing the quality for use for the use of the shaft in a subsequent process it has to lie between 0.2485 and 2515 the question is very simple if you if you make 100 shafts how many shafts will will make the cut and how many shafts will be rejected is that is the question clear now we are trying to answer that question using gaussian probabilities okay now p of blah 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 you do all that you can see it is a very healthy Point nine one nine two. So I'm, I leave the presentation anyway with you. So ninety two ninety two percent of the shafts produced conform to this specific conform to this specification. But what the manager will ask is there is a lot of sheet there is a lot of metal which is used and machinery is used. People's time eight percent of the shafts are wasted. Can you reduce the eight percent shaft to the five percent? Then that fellow say tool sir you give me high speed this tool you give me a better machine you give me a better CNC machine you give me a robot. So so this will be then. the cost of the final equipment will increase then whether sales will get affected if if you are uh, if if you are not doing that then 8 8% will get wasted so this is a tough so this is a tough question we will have to answer so is this clear uh, so far so good yes sir all right okay now i go to regression so i will just uh, Uh, talk for one or two. Uh, I'll talk up to five five, and then we'll have a ten minute break. Okay, so I will go to my room and have something uh, provided the monkeys allow me to go out of this uh, seminar hall now. So I think they also want to register for the courses now. Looks like <laughs> okay. So the Diveja Center is not infested with monkeys. I just figured out that they found a new home, which is one of the trees, and uh, they have also figured out that all the people here are very. Uh, 
what's a harmless or whatever according to them so they going to, so basically i come from a place where we'll, every day we encounter a lot of monkeys iit madras campus so the bad news is once it has found a group has found a home now 3 4 months it will be here so i'm going to be here for another 4 months so i'm going to have it those people who are doing phd just watch out or just see in google whether you can do some musical instruments you can blow some horn and threat and uh, chase them away or something okay or we'll wait for the rain gods if there is some other mango tree somewhere else on the campus where they're going to get a lot of good fruits then once food and water is there then they will go right now i think they are not getting food basically its campus is dry there's no rain i see that the most of the trees are not uh, bearing fruits huh so where will they go so they are attacking they are coming for food okay i think it's as simple as that now uh so let's start with this wonderful statement regression analysis is the hydrogen bomb of the statistics arsenal so regression and regression is basically what everybody is talking about science engineering business commerce whatever economies all the finance people all the people are talking about regression regression in fact the psychotherapists are also talking about regression therapy and all that where they will go find your what you did previously and all that i don't know how much of it is correct but anyway so what is regression or what what is the power of regression regression holds the key to unlock several problems in almost all branches of science and engineering the key goal is to establish relationships between a dependent variable and a set of independent variables so basically uh suppose you are having y equal to f of x1 x2 of the xn i want to crack this okay i want to crack this i want to crack this that means i want to figure out what that f is based on the data so what i what i am essentially having in regression e Okay, serial number x one, x two, x three, x four. Okay, wait. One, two, three, four. I have points. I have values for all this. Now you tell me what is this? What is F? F could be a simple linear combination of the variables. that is a not the simplest y equal to a plus b x1 plus c x2 plus d x3 okay or it will be y equal to a into e to the power of minus b x1 d e to the power of minus b x2 e to the power of minus Y equal to y into x one to the power of b into x two to the power of c x three to the power of d, or it could be highly nonlinear. Y into y e to the power of minus, okay, y e into y e to the power of minus b plus c x one plus d x two, or it could be just y equal to y e plus b x one plus c x two plus d x two plus e x one square plus f x two square g x three square h x one x two. X two, X three, X one, X X one, X two, X two, X three, X one, X three. Ah, but now, can you tell me what A, B, C, and sir, why do you, why can't we, why can't we just leave it, sir? Let's have fun. Why do you want to torture it? No, no, no. That is not the point. We want to be able to come out with some answer to this. With the goal being, you give me any value of X one and X two, X three, I'll be able to predict. I want to do predictive analytics. I'll be. You tell me the value of X one, X two, X three. I will give you the value of Y. If y is in a closed form, y is in a closed math in a closed form mathematical expression like this, and you are doing regression, it is a traditional regression which is the field of statistics. However, if you don't worry about this form and then keep on training, then just just allow this to develop on its own, and you have a regression, but the parameters of the regression are hidden, and you just allow the and you just see how the like you mimic how the brain is working. even then you will get a regression that is called the neural network but in the neural network explicitly these things will not be given so it will be hidden only once you train if you give an x1 x2 x3 
it will return the value of y it is not doing mumbo jumbo all the all the hard work all the studies all the math all the math is hidden inside so we will unravel that for at least for a simple case we will decode how to do that how the neural network is doing that that will be towards the end of the course once you do that once you have the confidence that this is the way it is being done then you don't have to write the code you don't have to write the code yourself matlab many other uh, tools are available where directly a neural network is possible okay so the regression opens the gateway for predictive analytics in data science and machine learning it is a vital importance in solving estimation problems you want to find out at some value at some value uh, at some value you want uh, uh, some particular combination of x1 x2 x3 you want the value of y okay either as an interpolating tool or or as an extrapolation so it is based on the simple idea of reducing errors so a simple a desi way of doing that would be take some combinations of a b c and d and substitute and get the value of y here see the error and square it add them now you change it see the error change it change it see and and look at the pattern and see how a b c d will be finally obtained is there a method to this madness the method to the madness is the field of regression okay there is a scientific way of approaching this problem the desi way would be to do what is called a this will be use what is called a helter skelter approach are take some random values take some four five combinations see how the error is proceeding progressing then fine tune your parameters and so the problem is it is a very not only unscientific it is unimaginary unimaginative and it would also be very very expensive all right now it's time for a break so shall we say online or how does it work ha huh? ah uh,